Welcome back to part three of our series on the system.reflection namespace. So previous video, we started exploring our interface members. Well, let me be more specific because I'm sure people are confused at this point. We took all of our interface types and for each of those interface types, we call the get members method, which returns basically an array of member info objects. And depending on the type of member info that it was, we then started diving a little bit deeper. So for example, if the member info uh, object was a method, then we wanted to know the method name, we want to know the return type. And for methods, there's a, uh, this is going to be super confusing. For method types, there is another method called get parameters. And that one gets all the parameters that are used in that method. And so some of those can be optional, some of those cannot be optional, some of those have default values, and so on. And really, all we've done at this point is we're just getting some information. We're learning about our particular code, um, and we'll see down the road, this is getting us all the information we need in order to write some Python source code that interacts with our particular assembly. Now. Technically speaking, you can also use this on .NET assemblies too. So things like, ironically enough, you could use it on the system.reflection namespace if you wanted to. Um, there's really nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, would you? It's up to you. I mean, if you want IntelliSense features, I'm sure it would make a lot of sense, but it's definitely a lot of information. So you just gotta be ready. You might be overwhelmed. All right, so now that we've worked with methods, we're gonna to go to the next one, which is properties. So I'm gonna take some more code. I've really liked this series because I haven't had to type a lot at the same time. Um, it's been nice because, you know, for the most part, it is what it is, and I just don't wanna bore you too much with the typing aspect and just being repetitive. I'd rather just print it and show you because I think that's more useful, at least from my experience. Okay, so really this is just a big old loop with some big old if statements. The first one was testing if it was a method. The second one is determining if it's a property. So I'm saying does my interface.member type property equal the system.reflection.member types enumeration. Inside that enumeration, there is a property um, name. And so if these two match, it means I have a property. Like any member, I want to get the name first. I want to see, does it have a special name? Might not, might. I want to know if we can read the property. So is this a property that we read a value from? Um, can we write to it? So some properties are just read only. For example, you can't change the application name in Excel, so that one would be considered a read only. But other ones like cell.value, that's read and write. You can read it and write it. So this one's gonna help us determine which of these properties are gonna be writable and which ones aren't. Because again, that's important when we're generating the source code. If we don't know that, how do you make sure your code's gonna work when someone's using it? It's basically the challenge we would be writing, uh, running into. Um, what system type is the property? So this is kind of useful to just get a better understanding of what you're dealing with. If it's a property, does it have um, a set method? If it does have a set method, could I get its name? Um, if it doesn't, that's fine. Just let me know there's no set method. So for example, if I can write it, I should be able to set it. So there should be a set method. Um, is there a get method? If it's readable, it should have a get method. And if it's writable, it should have a get method as well because I should be able to get that value. Um, so these ones are basically saying, hey, does this particular property info member have a set method or a get method? And then all I do at the end is I just simply print out the information so that way people can see it. That's really the important part. It's just not over, well, I'm sure it's overwhelming, but better than having a glob of information, at least this way it's at least somewhat organized. But, you know, this is obviously one of the challenges of it is you know, sometimes we can be waiting, what, uh, hoping this all finishes. 
Well, I mean, I'm not hoping. I mean, I know it finishes. Just being patient enough to let it finish. <laughs> Man, my computer is running. What is that? <laughs> I might not run it till the end again. <laughs> that was kind of taking a long time. Uh, okay, so for example, here's some property, or here is a property. Um, its name is sh shows Show Signatures Pane. Um, we know its type. We know the enumeration. Is it a special name? False. Property type, it's a Boolean. So that means we need to make sure that Python, the code that's being sent through to us is of the correct type. And we can write it and we can read it. And we also know it's set method and it's get method. So all very important pieces of information when it comes to recreating our code. Now that was a simple one. That was the iDummy interface. Some of these you can tell have uh, significantly more. So for example, application, this is the one I was talking about before. You can't write the application property. The application is the application. So very important that you understand that. And then this is actually kind of nice too, understanding this. So property type, Excel creator. So it means it takes one of the enumerations that we saw before. That's important. That's a very valuable piece of information. So now that we've done that, we've seen properties, let's move on to fields. Oh yes, fields, good old fields. Uh, perfect. And with this one, what we're gonna do, so this is a field. And I want to see, is that the right one? Oh, I need to indent it a little bit more and then I will be good. All right, so same logic, but again, we're just grabbing the name, grabbing if it's private or public, clearing type, field type, so on and so on. Ah, oh, Lordy. Okay. Let me, well, that's finishing up. Field info. Let's take a look at it. So with this one, I don't really know how to explain it in the sense of Python, but Again, it, it still has kind of the same aspects that we've seen with properties and stuff like that. So usually with fields, from my understanding at least, it's kind of something that it's part of the class itself. And so, oh, of course it froze. Come on. Where's my code? <gasps> Don't tell me you opened, destroyed my code. There we go. Perfect. Um, so this is something that would be more internal to the class itself. Um, it wouldn't be something you're necessarily modifying or things like that. It's just they're part of the class, but they're not something you're really going to ever be accessing. They're kind of more encapsulated inside of it, um, but they do exist. And when it does come time to recreate certain things, it's important that we uh, make sure we put that in there. So. That's getting fields. I'm not going to print it again because I don't want it to freeze. The next one that we're going to get is events, the one that I've been hating the entire time. <laughs> I don't hate them. It's just there's so many of them. So it's like, it just takes an awful long time. Uh, I guess I can leave it like that. I mean, yeah, technically it can just be Olive. I don't know why I wrote it like that. Member type. If, okay, perfect. So what I'm gonna do is, 
indent this one a little bit more. And with events, again, same idea. I'm just grabbing the name. These ones do have add methods. So these are the methods that will add the event we want to. And then we have remove methods. And then there's a raise method that will raise the event. Um, and then we have the declaring type and the event handler. So we have a raise method, a remove method, and an add method. So again, all important pieces of information we know need to know when it comes to recreating our source code. Now, some of this I'm going to leave particularly ambiguous at this point because, again, I think it just kind of makes sense to explain it when you're actually writing it. I think that kind of gives more context. Um, I don't like kind of explaining things if you don't see something in front of you and I'm just kind of rambling on. Um, but at this point, again, we're just getting some more information about it and we're going to print it. So let's see what we get. But what I do need to make sure is I am going to turn off this. So FYI, it might run a little bit, but it's important that it does. So that way you can clearly see everything. And I'm just going to make sure all my indents are good. I'm happy. Wonderful. Great. So be ready. There's going to be a lot. But this is pretty much everything. I think this is just such a neat library, though, because if you think about it, I mean, there's just so much information. There's all the types, the different methods, properties, the parameters that exist. There's such a phenomenal amount of information here. It's like if you think about ever having to recreate the source code for this, it's like you really have all the pieces you need. Um, and that's really the cool thing about these assembly libraries and these interop libraries is it doesn't matter the language the code was written in. It's allowing us some kind of mechanism to go in there and grab the information that we need and then use that in a different language if we wanted to. So it's just super useful and super helpful that we have all this information. Oh, good, it finished. Okay, so I'm gonna, okay, so let's just kind of keep it right here for right now because I don't wanna kind of keep scrolling up. So again, because it's an event, We'll deal with it. So we have an interface. It's related to an event. Um, the event is called got focus. Its add method is add got focus, and its remove method is remove got focus. So most of the time it's pretty intuitive. Microsoft has done a pretty good job about naming things in a what I would call a make sense convention. If that's the right word to use. Um, in this case, it does not have a raise method. Um, we do have a declaring type. And then we also do have an event handler. So this is the particular, um, what is it? The particular uh, event handler that we need. So a lot of this will make sense, again, as we're writing it. And you'll kind of go like, what's declaring type? What's an event handler type? Again, I'm going to kind of keep that particularly ambiguous right now. Because, again, when you see it, I think it makes a little bit more sense. But with that being said, taking enough of your time. And that's actually the last part of the series. So at this point, you have all the information you need in order to effectively parse an assembly in python.net. Now, just because we have the information doesn't mean it's useful yet, doesn't mean we can do anything with it. But what I'm gonna be showing you down the road, probably not right away, but down the road, where is it? I'm going to open up a new um, open up a new window. There's a particular type of namespace inside. Um, where is it? In a inside of the .NET framework. It's an interesting one because it's related to coding and generating source code. So that particular one is called code dom. With this one, what my goal is, is we're gonna have a library in essence that will be able to generate source code for us, but in a library sense. So things like, hey, I want to add a library. I wanna add multiple libraries to my code. I wanna write a module. I wanna write my import lines, things like this. So creating a class structure, or a library that will allow you to basically build the parts of your code that you need in a systematic way. 
So that's the cool thing about this, and that's what I'm hoping it does, but it's gonna just take a while to build it, but we don't need it necessarily to um, do what we need to do with the Excel object model. But that's kind of what's coming up down the road. And then naturally what we're gonna start getting into next is actually building these particular um, class libraries. And you can kind of see already, I already have some. <laughs> And they're here. Some, you know, obviously some of it's still not working right because I haven't added the portions that I need. But that's basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be generating these Python uh, scripts that will be able to call those particular objects and things like that. So lots of cool stuff coming up down the road. I'm probably going to do the Windows form one before I do the Excel object model one. But um, that's kind of what you can expect coming down the road. So if you have any questions, obviously put them down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. And then also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So thank you again for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next series.